But some wild-eyed, eight-foot-tall maniac grabs you by the neck and taps your favorite head up against the barroom wall and asks you if you paid your dues. You just remember what old Jack Burton says at a time like that. Have you paid your dues, Jack? Yes, sir. The check's in the mail. That's a little... Can we do, can we do another one on that? Now, we're talking about one of my favorite movies of all time today, Big Trouble in Little China. Ah, uh, man, this movie is weird. <laughs> oh, so weird. I love it. Shut up, Mr. Burton. You are not brought upon this world to get it. Which low pan? Uh, a little basket case on wheels or eight foot tall roadblock? Now, this really pisses me off to no end. This is a 1986 movie directed by uh, John Carpenter. Uh, one of the classics, I think one of his best movies. My two favorite John Carpenter films both star Kurt Russell, okay? The Thing and Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, of course, today we're going to talk about Big Trouble in Little China. It takes place on the streets of San Francisco as um, Lo Pan. Ancient vampire demon creature. Cursed, cursed incorporeal ghost is uh, looking to find a Chinese girl with green eyes so that he can marry her and uh, free his soul or something. You can go off and rule the universe from beyond the grave. Indeed! Or check into a cycle or whichever comes first, huh? I love a little foggy on the details. This movie has so many amazing scenes and lines and just an incredible amount of world building, huge cast, Kurt Russell. Cash, I guess. I mean, it's not deductible, is it? <laughs> James Hong. Peasant magic. Dennis Dunn. Victor Wong. <laughs> and of course, Kim Cattrall. Hi, Mr. David Lopan. Who I think does the movie in contact lenses because they also give her green eyes. Chinese girls do not come with green eyes. He's really into these green eyes. He's big on the green eyes. What does it mean? <laughs> Two girls with green eyes? One of my favorite things growing up is uh, the monsters. All the monsters. I think that there's a, as a Dungeons and Dragons aficionado, there's a couple of creatures in there I recognize. I think there's a bugbear in one scene. There's uh, certainly a beholder. That's a very famous scene in the movie. I kinda get it wrong, it's a little too small. It doesn't shoot lasers from its eyes, but whatever. Uh, don't know if that came directly from John Carpenter or if just somebody in production design or something was uh, had a monster manual around and was picking things out, I don't know. Lots of crazy, crazy things happen in this movie. Anyway, great scene in the movie where Egg Shen, played by Victor Wong, is helping our intrepid heroes gird themselves for battle as they plan to storm uh, Lo Pan's uh, great and terrible downtown fortress, uh, he gives them a drink, uh, which I actually always thought was called Six Demon Bag, um, but actually a Six Demon Bag is a different thing. He gives them a drink uh, that he calls medicine. I'm for the medicine! <laughs> Cheers! Uh, <laughs> Kurt Russell, uh, Jack Burton says, uh, uh, This does what again, exactly? Huge buzz. Uh, so I don't know if, if it was actually supposed to be magical or if he just thought they were all going to die and figured it should go out in a, uh, you know, in style. Um, I have always heard this drink referred to as Six Demon Bag, and everybody I know refers to it as Six Demon Bag. But actually, on revisiting the scene, Jack Burton asks, what else could you want? Kind of sarcastically. Hey, what more can a guy ask for? Oh, the Six Demon Bag. Terrific. A Six Demon Bag. Sensational. What's in it, Egg? Win. Fire, all that kind of thing. Filled with all kinds of things, wind and stuff, I don't know, shadows, you know, six demon bag. Ah. But, but just because, you know, that's what I've always called it and everybody I know calls it, we're gonna call this drink the six demon bag. You're gonna need some baiju. Baiju is a traditional Chinese um, liquor. Uh, I think it's usually distilled from sorghum. I have some Mount Prince here. Um, this is strong stuff. This is 53% alcohol. Uh, and it has a hell of a taste. Uh, it can easily overpower a drink. Um, this one is a little easier sipping 
than the Kowling wine from Taiwan, uh, or at least to me. Um, but just to give, you know, if you may not be familiar with Baijiu, um, I'll give you guys a quick taste. As I've been informed, Baijiu is frequently drunk by, uh, it's kind of like a, a hair of your chest, uh, put some hair on your chest kind of thing, show off what a tough guy you are. Uh, so, you know, it, I don't know that tasting good is desirable. Um, and I've, I'm not mistaken, it's drunk in really tiny shot glasses, quarter ounces. So I've poured myself a quarter ounce of Baijiu there. And I'll just give you guys a quick taste of this Mount Prince Baijiu on its own. 53% alcohol. What, um, what does that smell like? It smells extremely strong. Um, I don't know what the word is for that. I mean, it smells a little bit like gasoline and funk. It's got some, like, footness to its odor. But, like, very chemical... Um, honestly, I don't mean this as like a slight against Baijiu, but having no experience with in my ethnic heritage of any food that comes anywhere close to this, uh, my immediate response is that this is not edible. That this is un uh -oh. immediately have an instinct that that doesn't smell like something you can put in your mouth and drink. Um, but we're going to for you and for science. Um, anyway, what is? Oh, there's a slight. It's hung out there. It's got a little air on it now, and now it's kind of almost sweet. But man, it's 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 some kind of a syrup that I'm getting off of that, like a like a blueberry syrup. It sounds crazy, but it's I, it's right on the tip of my tongue. I don't know what that is. It's some kind of a sweet, like sickeningly sweet, sweet. Okay, enough stalling, Greg. Oh man. Oh, that's not my favorite. First off, it's better than another Baijiu I've had. Uh, it doesn't have the. It has a, a pretty long, lingering flavor. It is fiery. It's got a lot of alcohol in it. There is like this thread of real sweetness throughout this particular bottle that kind of carries it, not in a terribly pleasant way. Uh, for me, the dominant flavor in this is wet dog. Uh, it really, and I, I'm not exaggerating, it really strongly evokes, uh, my grandmother had uh, a cadre of very um, ill-bathed English sheepdogs. And this tastes just like the smell of those English sheepdogs. Um, not my favorite thing. Something that has that really pungent flavor. We can use some of this in a larger drink uh, with some other flavors, and we can we can get just enough of that um, essence to have this be a baijiu cocktail that features the baijiu, um, balances its components, I think, I think, um, and kind of adds a little bit more notes to its evolution. Uh, into a pretty pleasing drink. So uh, we're gonna shake this, nothing like waking up, you know, 9.30 in the morning and drinking a shot of Baijiu. That's the way we roll. Oh, good. You can see things no one else can see, do things no one else can do. I'll start here with some pineapple juice. I'm gonna add half an ounce of pineapple juice and one ounce of lime juice one ounce of my lime juice. A couple dashes of these Elamakule uh, Tiki Bitters from Bitterman's. I'm a huge fan of these. Um, I generally think that they will Im improve uh, a whole range of drinks. Want a half an ounce of ginger syrup. I've done a video on this. Uh, I make it pretty much the same way every time. Uh, and I'm gonna put a link below if you wanna check out how to make ginger syrup. Full disclosure, um, if you decide to check out my video on how to make ginger syrup, it was shot on an iPhone uh, next to a swimming pool by a, on a grill. So it'll look a little different, okay? Don't be upset about that. I'm gonna go with uh, three quarters of an ounce of this Baijiu.
and two ounces of Appleton Estate um, Rare Blend 12 Year. This is a very nice rum. It's one of my, it's a good rum. Um, I like there, this is good stuff. That's all the news that's fit to print, so let's shake it up. Okay, so I put my ice cube in, and I'm gonna crack a second ice cube in there. Shake this real vigorously. Okay. At, at this point, I could just serve the, pour this right into the glass I'm gonna serve it in, but if we're gonna go the extra distance and make a whole presentation out of it, um, I've got this uh, kettle with some dry ice in it. I'll strain it into that. I think this would be, a, you know, you could serve it this way to your guests. Although technically you shouldn't. Uh, make sure that your dry ice is in some kind of a tea strainer in there so that it doesn't accidentally come out into your uh, glass. I like uh, a desiccated citrus wheel floating in this one. Don't know why, <laughs> I just think it looks, hello. I think it works for this drink. Um, let me tell you how it is. Hopefully it's, uh, it's good. Yeah, that's different. This is a different drink. Let me try that one more time. I like it. It's definitely growing on me. This will not be everybody's cup of tea, there's no question. This is pretty strong medicine. Um, it is a bright and citrusy, gingery, tart, tart, drinkable drink. And I like all of those things. It is an uplifter. It's a light, citrusy, tart, drinkable drink. Um, that Baiju is not lost in it. And that is part of the intent. Um, if I had completely, I don't know that you could completely cover up the Baiju in a drink, but if I had, then why would I have put it in there, right? So my whole goal here was to do a drink that would feature the Baiju. And it's definitely present and in a way that is much more accessible and much more drinkable than just straight up Baiju. So if you're interested in exploring those flavors, that's true for any less accessible liquor. Uh, if you're interested in exploring those flavors, a drink like something like this, ginger is a great way to cut that, um, is something to look into. So I gave you the tart and the slightly sweet gingery, slightly hot, like hot ginger, kind of thing, but I did skip over all the baiju parts that are in there, so let me do this again and I'll give you that. Yeah, citrus. So it's not wet dog, that's gone. We've killed the wet dog thing. Well, that sounds like an ASPCA problem. I didn't want to kill a wet dog, but we've removed the wet dog from the drink. But there is like a funk to it that's adjacent to, but very different from, a kind of funky rum funk. Um, and this is a particularly not funky rum. Uh, that's one of the reasons I used it. It won't compete in that way, but it's there. It may not be to your liking. It may not be to everybody's liking. And I don't even know if it would be a drink that I would go for every day, but it's certainly an interesting drink. Uh, and it's definitely drinkable. Um, and it has a pleasant evolution, even now, those flavors are kind of commingling on my palate that um, that ginger and the slightly different weird funky sweetness of the baiju that's because it's sorghum -y thing that's going on I don't know what that is it's different I mean I it's hard because 
It's just not something I'm used to drinking or eating. The flavors are not something I've ever encountered that often. I mean, it's like a color out of space uh, to throw an H.P. Lovecraft reference in there now being turned into a film. Um, I have to do a color out of space episode, actually. That's a good point. So there it is. Uh, if you have um, a gourd uh, filled with dry ice and a little golden goblet, that might be more appropriate to the film for drinking your six demon bag out of. But uh, I don't think we did too bad here. Uh, so Egg Shen gives everybody his medicine, his six demon bag, um, before they enter Lopan's dungeon. Um, does it give anybody special powers? I think the joke is that it doesn't. It just gets everybody kind of high, um, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> feel pretty good. <laughs> and I'm not, uh, I'm not scared at all. I just feel kind of, feel kind of invincible. <laughs> me too. I got a very positive attitude about this. Good, me too. Yeah. getting hot in here or is it just me? I don't think, because certainly Jack Burton thinks he has special powers. Oh, he does catch that dagger. That does happen. But I'm not entirely certain that that's down to the uh, six demon bag. I mean, as he says, it's it's all in the reflexes, you know? Yeah, he does. It's great. He just throws it right back. It's fantastic. But I mean, he's been talking about his reflexes throughout the whole movie. I don't think that was the six demon bag. I think that was just a payoff on like, this guy isn't the big bag of wind that you think he is, except that he is. It's just the one moment. Just the one moment when he's not a big wind bag. <laughs> uh, at the very least, my version also will not give you any special powers. Um, it will definitely, uh, it will definitely put you under the table though. Yeah, it's different. It's, it's, it's interesting. It does, it makes you think, it makes you notice it. It's not a, uh, it's kind of cool. I'm never gonna drink it again, but I do like it. <laughs> Full disclosure, it's just not, never gonna be sitting around with the wife looking for a nightcap and think, you know what, I'm gonna have a glass of six demon bag. It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> you want a daiquiri, Collins? Cause I'm gonna have a six demon bag. It's just. Well, yeah, that's the thing though. If you were, if you were, you know, with, uh, Stranger Things season three out. I'm really thinking about these John Carpenter movies, these 80s movies that I grew up with. So that's why I couldn't get it out of my head how to do this. You ever barreling down the highway on a dark and stormy night? You just remember what old Greg from Out of Drink told you is, uh, get your back up against the wall. Uh, don't pee into the wind. Um, you know, uh, leave the light on. Uh, don't drive and drink. Uh, make sure someone else has your keys. And uh, you just look life in the eye and grab it by the horns and say, uh, I, 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 I'll, I'll have, uh, you can close out my tab, actually. I'm done for the night. That'd be good. He is sort of a play on, like, um, early 30s, like, uh, Fu Manchu villains and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I think it's a great movie. I think it's one of the great movies. I'm going to say that right now. Uh, it should be in the American film industry's top 100. I mean, not top 10, but I think that... Big Trouble in Little China, one of the great films of all time. Well, I do wish you would describe a jerk as something other than wet dog, though. Oh, no, it's a good wet dog. <laughs> it tastes, uh, yeah, I'm being asked to describe the drink in more flowery nice. terms than wet dog. I mean, it's wet dog, but nice. You know, it's the nicest version of wet dog you've ever had. How's that sound? I think mm. I'll see you later this week with a regular episode. I'll see you next week with another movie episode. And until then... Uh, you just remember what old Jack Burton tells you. When some eight foot tall maniac grabs you by the neck and puts your favorite head up against the bar wall and looks you in the eye crooked and says, have you paid your dues? Have you paid your dues? Do you remember what old Jack Burton says, have I paid my dues? Yeah, I've paid my dues, buddy. The check's in the mail. Did I get it that time?